Hello everyone, my name is Lisa and I'm with Lisa Cape and Quilts and today I am starting a new quilt. This is going to be a t-shirt quilt. It's going to be a throw size collage style quilt and that just simply means that all of the t-shirt quilt blocks are going to be different sizes. I thought I'd bring you along and show you some of the tips that I've been incorporating in designing my collage style t-shirt quilts. Now, if you'd like to see a full tutorial, I will put a link in the description box below that brings you along as I design a t-shirt collage style quilt. And uh, that shows you all kinds of things from stabilizing your shirts, cutting out your blocks, measuring your blocks, and doing partial seams. And so if you've never done that and you'd like to learn how, make sure to check out that link in the description box. And if you'd like to follow along and learn all different kinds of tips and how to's when it comes to t-shirt quilts, memory quilts, and other quilty kind of quilt projects. I would love it if you subscribe and click the bell notification and uh, you'll be notified when I publish a new video. So here lately I've had tons and tons of orders for collage style t-shirt quilts and I've been sharing my progress of my quilts over on my Facebook page. A link will be in the description box below if you'd like to join and follow along. And I've had tons of questions, uh, all different kinds of questions, and I thought I would share in today's video an easy way to use graph paper. Today I'm using one of my grid sets, but you can also use just regular graph paper. A simple way to come up with a layout that works best for you and the size of quilt that you're going to make. So I thought I'd bring you along and share my idea and my tips for designing this quilt. So let's go ahead and get started. So where I'm at with this quilt is I've cut apart all of my shirts. And if this is the first quilt you've ever made and you've never seen any of my videos, I'll put a link in the description box as well to a great way to cut apart your shirts. If you're really nervous about that, it'll take away the anxiety of cutting apart your beloved shirts. So check that video out as well. So I've already cut apart my shirts and I have all of the usable uh, logos stacked right here. Now, if you're doing a collage style quilt, I highly suggest uh, off to the side, you can't see, but I have saved the sleeves from the shirts. I've saved the back sides or the uh, blank pieces of shirts that do not have logos on them. They are off to the side waiting because that's valuable material that matches all of the pieces that you're going to use in your quilt and you can use that to fill in the empty spaces in your quilt design so don't get rid of that yet so I haven't stabilized anything yet I just have the stack of shirts and they're just waiting for the next step and what I do next is I go through with a ruler and I roughly measure the logo and I add a little note just pinned to the bottom the size of the block that I want to make this piece into and then I assign the shirt a number Okay, so go through all of your shirts at once they're cut apart and sorted and roughly measure your logo and number your shirt. So I've done that all the way through. You can see like this shirt when we get to it will be 14 inches across and 4 inches tall. This is number 19 and I will use that number on my grid and I'll show you how I plan on using that. But if you go through and you pre-measure all of your logos, when it comes to stabilizing your shirt, you'll waste a lot less stabilizer if you know roughly the size that you're going to use in your shirt. And you can cut a smaller piece instead of stabilizing the whole entire shirt, you can cut out a smaller piece and waste a lot less interfacing. So I have all of my shirts here and the very next thing I'm going to do is make a list. So this seems like a lot of pre-work, but isn't making a quilt. That's a, Usually you have a lot of work to do before you actually get to cutting and sewing, right? Uh, with any quilt pattern. This is really no exception. 
So what I've done is I've gone through and made a list. And what I like to do to keep myself organized and keep an even flow of colors throughout my quilt is I look through all of my pieces and I make a list of all the different colors that are going to be in this quilt. So I have black, white, pink, blue, red, and tan. And those are the basic colors of all of the shirts that are included in this quilt. Now, of course, there are variations of blue and variations of pink, but in general, they're pink and they all go in the pink column. The next thing I do is take an inventory of all my shirts. And so this 14 by 10 is primarily a black block. 14 by 10, number 21. I just go through and I write down each one of the shirts and the measurements in the column for the color. That's going to give me a general idea of the colors in my quilt and the sizes of the blocks. By taking a look at this list, you can see that predominantly I have a lot more blue blocks than I do any other color in this quilt. And I'm going to pay attention to that when I'm placing out my blocks, as much as possible, I'm going to try to distribute the blue blocks evenly throughout the quilt, if I can, if the sizes allow, and I can do that. I'm going to try to evenly distribute the blue and then fill in with the remaining colors. I'm hoping that that makes sense. <laughs> what I want to try to avoid is a big section of white blocks up here and a bunch of blue down in the corner where I could have really evenly spaced them all out so there's a good even flow throughout the quilt. So now that I have this list, we're ready to start playing with our graph paper. Here we are. I have my list of all of my shirts and measurements and I have my two inch uh, throw size quilt grid. If you'd like a copy of this quilt grid, it comes in five different sizes and a link to my Etsy shop will be in the description box below. However, you can go to the Dollar Tree and I have found graph paper at the Dollar Tree. And so that's a really inexpensive way to uh, plan and design your quilts is just with regular graph paper. This grid really simplifies the whole process because I've gone through and done some of the work for you. Each one of these squares represents a two inch finished portion of your quilt. And when you fill in all of these little tiny squares, you achieve a quilt size that is 52 by 72 inches. And so what I've done is I've printed off several copies of this and we're going to play around with some crayons. <laughs> I'm a very simple person. You could use uh, colored pencils. If you are good with uh, computer programs, this is a PDF. You could incorporate this P PDF into a computer program and do all kinds of manipulation in different programs. I am quite sure I use Inkscape. Uh, it's a free um, vectorizing software. I do play around with that. However, Today we're keeping it very simple and we are doing very basic design that anybody can do and I'm using crayons and quite simply this is most of the time the way that I do this. So I have one blank grid that we're going to work with and I have several copies right here and what I do is I go through for each one of these shirts and I'm going to mark off on my grid, let's start with this black column, a 16 by 10 inch square. So this is two inches, we're gonna count by two. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. And a 10 inches is five down. One, two, three, four, five. And it doesn't have to be pretty and it doesn't have to be neat. This will be in number 20. What I like to do is put the shirt number in there and then I will find a crayon and you know what? I'm pretty sure, oh, nope, I do still have some black crayon. 
I like to go in and color in this block 16 by 10 and I'm going to show you why I do that here in just a minute. So for each one of these pieces we're going to do the same exact thing. The next one is 14 by 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 by 10. This will be number 21. The next is 16 by 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. <laughs> Sorry, I have to count out loud to myself. This will be number 3. And we're also going to have another one. 1, 1 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now for each one of your blocks on your quilt, you will want to do the same exact thing. And I like to go ahead and color in the shirt color just like this. And it doesn't have to be perfect and precise. Once you've done this for each one of your colors and each one of your shirt blocks, that's why I print off several because more than likely we're going to have to use a couple pages to get them all in there. But once you've done that for each one of your quilt blocks, I'm just going to simply cut them out. Just like that. So we're going to take these two and use as our example. We'll bring back our blank grid and now we have our t-shirt blocks that we can move around and manipulate until we get a placement that we really like. And so you can see uh, using the colors you can get an even distribution with your quilt design. So let me go ahead and cut out all of my blocks and we'll come back and play with the placement for our quilt. At this point I have all of my t-shirt blocks colored in and cut apart. So you can see these little pieces represent all of my t-shirt logos and the big pieces that will fill in my quilt. So at this point I'm just going to set this aside because I can always look back and refer to number 20 as a 16 by 10 if I need to look at this guide. So I'll keep this and just set it off to the side. So now we can begin putting together the quilt much like a puzzle. So remember when I said I would start with the blue because there's more blue pieces and I want to incorporate them throughout the entire quilt. Now we can just begin placing all of these blocks into our quilt. So usually I like to put a larger block in a corner area and uh, we'll put this there. Let's put number 11 down in this corner and because we're just playing all of this can be adjusted and moved around just like that. And now we can uh, fill in these three pieces. Let's see, let's put one here. Let's put one here. And let's put one right here. What I like about this is nothing's permanent. So if you don't like it, you can move something around. Remember, we have not even cut the shirts yet. And so they're just off waiting because at any time, 
if you needed to fill in some empty space around one of your blocks, you could adjust the size of your quilt block at this point. So let's take these red blocks and we don't want them side by side and so we can place one right up here. My hands are always shaky. <laughs> and we can place one, let's place this one right here. Then we have these larger black pieces and some smaller ones. So we'll place one there. And let's place one here for now. And that just does fit, just like that. Of course, they're not going to behave because I'm filming. <laughs> But you get the general idea. You can play around with the placement. You can see if you're going to have two blocks that are the same color right next to each other. And what I have found to be really helpful is if you take a glue stick. And not so much this glue stick. I'm referring, they have a glue stick that is repositionable. And that would be perfect for using in this quilt design. However, I don't have one. <laughs> to show you. This is just a regular all-purpose glue stick. However, the uh, the bond, if you're just playing around uh, and just use a small amount, if you wanted to move this at some point, you could probably take this off. But they do have, uh, like I mentioned, the reper repositionable glue stick that would be better suited for a project like this. So just so that they'll stop moving around, I'm going to put a little bit of glue in there just to tack it down. But the general idea is you want to fill in all of your grid with your t-shirt blocks. And at this point, because we haven't cut out our t-shirts, nothing is set in stone. Now re remember that when we do go, oopsie, that's not going to fit. Let's move that one right there. When we do cut out our t-shirt blocks, we'll add a half inch seam allowance. And so a block that finishes at uh, 16 by 14, you would actually cut out at 16 and a half by 14 and a half. And really I'm just playing around here, so quite sure this is not going to be my final layout. <laughs> I really just want you to get the idea of how you can manipulate all of your blocks. And design your quilt right on paper. So we're coming along. I'm going to go ahead and fill in these pieces and I'll bring you along, but I'm going to speed up the rest of this so that we can kind of keep this video on the shorter side and uh, you'll be able to see what this quilt layout would look like. I do believe this will be a lot less painful to watch <laughs> now that I have sped up this part of the video really just wanting you to get a good visual idea of how you can move around and manipulate all of your different colored blocks. I will probably be purchasing some repositionable glue sticks <laughs> when I go to the store later this afternoon because I do think it would be much easier to use that than a regular glue stick. 
If you love doing jigsaw puzzles, then I think you would have a lot of fun designing a quilt like this. Just moving all of my pieces around. Just keep in mind, nothing is permanent. And I got a phone call, so I had to stop filming. <laughs> and we're just going to pick back up and finish placing all of these blocks together. I really urge you to pick up some graph paper. Uh, even if you don't use this grid set, the graph paper would help a lot in designing your quilts. So now I'm left with these two pieces. And we're going to talk about what happens when you run out of space in your quilt design. Okay, I think I pretty much have all of the blocks in there except for these two. And I'm running out of room. And at this point, it's not a catastrophe. You could always keep playing and keep moving things. And I had to pause the video because I had a phone call. So I had to move things around a little bit and answer the phone. So we're back and I have them pretty much all situated. These two blocks here, because I'm liking this placement, are going to need to be adjusted. And it's not a catastrophe because we haven't cut out our shirts yet. So what I'm going to do is pull these two shirts, this red one numbered B and this white shirt number 7. And I'm going to remeasure these uh, logos because usually I give myself a little bit of extra room in my measurements. And so I'm thinking that I can probably uh, change the measurement of these two blocks. If not... It's good to know at this point so that maybe I can move something else around in the quilt. But I'm thinking that because usually when I give myself a little bit of allowance room around my measurements on my logos, that I can change this block. Let's see, I want to put this one up right here. And so I need to reduce it by two inches. So this B block will now be 12 by 12 and we're going to cut off two inches off of that block and now it will fit and when I go to cut that shirt now I have it changed on my list the measurements to cut that block and this number seven block, I'll double check before I do uh, anything <laughs> because if I can't reduce this block to the size it needs to be, then I'm going to change something in the rest of these blocks. But I would like to put number seven right here. And so it's going to have to be reduced a lot. Maybe there is somewhere else I can put this, but for today's example, we're going to do this. <laughs> Let's see, three blocks. And so just like that. We have fit all of our shirts in there and at number seven, I would go through and change it to one, two, three, four, five, six, twelve by six, number seven. Of course, I would have checked that before I make that determination and I'm almost thinking that I would not be able to do that with that logo. There's a reason why it was that big and I would probably have to move something around in my quilt. But I wanted to show you an example 
of how I do uh, placement, how I work with my graph. It's an easy way to sit down and make sure that all of your colors are distributed throughout your quilt. And at this point, you'll notice that I have some blocks that are not filled in on my grid. And so now is also a good time to have your list because what you could do, if the shirt size allows it and you don't want lots of complicated little pieces, is you could play with the measurements of your blocks. Right here, we have a space that is one, two, three, four, five, 12 inches wide and four inches tall. So this uh, pink block here, number 18, is 12 by 14. What if we increased the um, length of our quilt to 18? and made this all one block. And so instead of cutting it out at 12 by 14, we would cut it out at 12 by 18. If the shirt is large enough, you would wanna double check that. And then this would be one block instead of uh, piecing in a piece here. You could also come through and this number 19 block, you could increase the size of that block so instead of being four inches tall, it would be eight inches tall. And you could cut out one block and fill in this area instead of piecing in all these smaller pieces right through there. Number 13, we could increase the width of this block here and make that, let's see, number 13 is 14 by 10, we could make that 16 by 10. Let's see, where else could we do that? We could do that with number 21. We have this small space here. Number 21 is 14 by 10, we could make that 14 by 12. me and my crayons <laughs> but it works see how well that works so just like that you can redesign your quilt right here on your graph before you ever even cut out your logos again it's going to save you stabilizer uh, money on your stabilizer it's going to save you time and it's going to give you a much better distribution with your shirts and your colors. Also, if you don't have a design wall, you're not moving all of these pieces on the floor trying to come up with a great layout. You're just simply working with simple tools and paper and scissors. So if you'd like to follow along in the progress of this quilt, I'm not quite sure this is the layout I'm going to go with, uh, but We'll see. If you're interested and curious about how this quilt will end up, you can uh, follow along. I like to update my uh, Lisa Cape and Quilts Facebook page uh, pretty regularly in the progress of my quilts because my clients are following along and watching their quilts being made. Now, if you have any questions, I would love to help. You can jump down to the comment section below. If you have any other ideas, uh, tips and tricks that help in the design process of your t-shirt quilts. I would love to hear from you in the comment section below and I'd love to know what works for you. I thank you so much for watching and uh, yeah I hope this is really helpful. I'm gonna go start uh, cutting out some t-shirts now. Have a great day everyone. Bye. Thank you so much for staying tuned to the end of my video. I have a little package I wanted to share with you. Miss Rosie Garcia, she is so sweet. She was sending me some pictures of a journal that she was making and she used some of the most fantastic fabric in that journal. And we had uh, quite
quite an interesting conversation about her journal, and I loved seeing her pictures. So I encourage you, whether it's quilt-related or journal-related, any kind of craft-related, if you want to share pictures with me, I would love to see what you are working on. I get such inspiration and a lot of joy by seeing your creative styles and the projects that you're making. I don't know if this will stay out of focus. <laughs> Maybe that will be better. I'm hoping that's better. Uh, so I just had to share this with you because she was so nice to send me some of her fabric that she had left over. And I confess, I've already opened it up and looked at everything. <laughs> And she was so nice to send me a couple of extra little surprises in this package. And so thank you so much, Rosie. This was so much fun opening this up this morning. And uh, I can't wait for everyone to see what is in here. So she has gotten into making junk journals or uh, we call them junk journals. Really, to me, it's not junk. But you use all different kinds of elements to create a unique journal. And uh, so she has made, get a load of this, these little paper clips out of fabric. And I'm assuming she has glued some file folder together to create a harder base. And then decoupaged fabric pieces with a paper clip in between her file folder. So this can be a page marker in your book. Isn't that so adorable? Look at that. Little license plates with quilt sayings. I absolutely love that. And then she's made a tag. I will put that right in my journal today. <laughs> and probably one of these paper clips because I like to mark in my book of everything. This is really a planner what page I'm on so it's easy to find where I am in my book. I love these paper clips. That is so adorable. And then she's also made an envelope. Whoops, we're going to have the grass cutter in the background during the rest of this video. She's also made an envelope from what appears to be a quilting magazine page. Isn't that just awesome? Thank you so much. <laughs> so let's take a look at these fabrics. I'm going to hold off on that one. She sent this one, which is very festive and colorful. Look at this. I love gray tone fabrics. Ooh, who knows what I'm going to do with that one. And then uh, I remember seeing pieces of this in a journal that she was making. Let's flip it around on the go the fabric hut safe travels road trip it has all kinds of luggage and the little license plates at the bottom that you could use and there's two pieces here so wow imagine all the things that you could do with this fabric <laughs> and then she sent me a larger section with all of these license plates Oops, it's upside down. Of course it's upside down. <laughs> Look at this. I, when I saw this, I was very tempted to go onto the DMV website to see if I can change my license plate to something quilt related. <laughs> I might even end up doing that. How awesome is this fabric? I absolutely love this. Uh, who knows how I'm going to use this, whether it be in a journal or in a quilt project. I have not yet decided, but more than likely I'm going to have it sitting next to my sewing machine so that I can be thinking about it while I'm working on other projects. <laughs> Thank you so much, Rosie, for sending me these extra pieces you have left over. I really appreciate it, and uh, I hope it has inspired whoever's watching to keep an eye out for this fabric and who knows what kind of projects that you could make from this. I loved getting my package. It was like Christmas uh, for me this morning. I knew it was coming so I've been excited. You know how like when you're little and you look forward to your birthday or look forward to Christmas and you can hardly sleep at night. 
that is how I have felt the last few days waiting for this package to show up. And rightfully so, because look at all of these little goodies. Thank you again so much, Rosie. I have loved seeing your journals, and I've loved hearing your story. And uh, I'm sure that everyone you are creating your journals for will absolutely treasure them and get a lot of use out of them. All right, now I am really going to work on my quilts. And again, if you'd like to uh, see progress of my quilts, join me over on Facebook at Lisa Cape and Quilts. We'll see you all really soon. Thank you, Rosie. I love it.